Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode number 375. Testosterone deficiency causes chronic diseases. Why we should replace testosterone to prevent the diseases that kill us. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. If you're a regular viewer of these health casts, and we hope that you are, you have heard us have a number of conversations about the, the reality that there's a conflict in modern medicine about whether or not testosterone replacement, hormone replacement therapy, especially for men, uh, is a good and desirable thing or not. There are bureaucratic limitations and regulations that get in the way of being able to receive that kind of treatment and the proponents of those regulations and the, and the doctors who were trained to not believe in using testosterone just readily throw out pieces of, of information that are not real information, not current they're information, not, not factually true. <laughs> they're, they're fake news. Uh, when they say, well, if you replace your testosterone, it'll kill you. You'll have a heart attack. You'll die. You'll get cancer. You get prostate cancer. You, all these bad things that they say is, you know, we don't want to do that because this other stuff could happen. But in reality, there is a substantial amount of respectable research that's been done around the world in, in Europe, in the United States, uh, that defends the proposition that we ought to replace our testosterone as we age because it it serves the interest of preventative medicine. It keeps you from getting sick in many other ways and, and dying. Yes. It decreases your mortality if you replace your testosterone. So why aren't we doing it? I mean, to me, that's like, oh, you have diabetes, insulin-dependent diabetes, but we're not going to give you insulin because we don't believe in it like it's a religion. Uh -huh. They say, I don't believe in testosterone. Like, it's a religion. I just, I laugh when patients come in and go, my doctor told me not to come here. Right. Because he doesn't believe in testosterone. I said, well, like, does he go to testosterone? What church does he go to? Is it a different religion? Anyway, I just, I, I have to make light of it because it just sounds so ridiculous to yeah. me. Well, I had the same issue years ago when I was seeing a lot of children that suffered from ADD and ADHD. <laughs> and it was often the dads, but the parents would come in and the dads would say, I don't want somebody medicating my kid. You know, those teachers are just lazy. I don't believe in ADD. I don't believe in it. And I, and I would ask him, I said, if, if your child was diabetic and needed insulin, mm -hmm. would you see that they got the medicine? Well, yeah. I said, well, is it possible that this could be? Well, no. And so, and so, well, well, the right. difference is that if we don't give someone who needs insulin, insulin, they die right away. Right. Right. But this is just a slower death. If we don't give them, if we don't give men testosterone. Well, so, so there are <laughs> two ways to defend the proposition mm -hmm. that we need to give them testosterone. One is to look at populations that don't replace their testosterone mm -hmm. and see what happens to them, what kind of illnesses they develop mm -hmm. over a lifetime and how early they die compared right. to men who do receive mm -hmm. testosterone. And there's a lot of research. And there's a lot of research. So low testosterone levels increase a man's risks of suffering from the following diseases. Mm -hmm. The first one is adult onset diabetes, which is particularly interesting in the United States because the federal government, Food and Drug Administration, has for years supported corn farmers as a major financial agenda of the Food and Drug Administration. And so they subsidized foreign, uh, corn growth and production and incorporation of corn products into our food. And now corn syrup, which is sweet, sugar-based, sugar -based. is in almost every prepared food that you can buy or consume. And as a result of that, at least 50% of the American population as it ages has or will develop Adult onset diabetes, type 2 diabetes. It's not just that. Okay. It's many things. It's we no longer work physical labor. Yeah. In the United States, so most, we don't burn it off. most of us are not physically active. Our brains are active. We do, even our children don't have 
have active lives. We don't walk places in, in the U.S. unless we live in a big city. You don't walk places. You get in a car and take your kids to soccer and then I pick them up and pick up mailbox. dinner. And then, I yeah, so so we've become a non-walking society. So, yeah. so there's so many things that have happened, but you always expect your gut. I mean, those things we can't really do much about. America's huge. Mm. We have we have a sprawling uh, suburban kind of right. city, so you can't really get around without without a car. So so that's that's something that I'm not sure we could have changed in America or we could have prevented. But the government does a lot of manipulating of the population by what they tell us is good for us mm -hmm. or not good for us. So they told us eating lots of carbohydrates was good for us. Right. And that went on from the 1960s, it may, early 60s, on until maybe 10 years ago. And then they went, oops, everybody's got diabetes, and that's from carbohydrates. But but it's not just from that. I'm, I, I want to qualify that. But they but did the make— will kill you. They, that's right. It will kill you, and it will make you very sick. That's a big sick. ups. That's a huge ups, yeah. and they should have known that. But I think they chose economics over the health of the American people, and I think that's pretty obvious. Mm. They knew it. The doctors gave them a different agenda. They ignored it, and they gave us, oh, gave our mothers this, oh, you should always have all this cereal, and, st and you know, mm -hmm. that's just not good for us. Yeah. In so fact, cereals day. in general— yeah to be gone. I mean, they're just carbs. And we start our day with that. And it's it's uh, enhanced with sugar, most of it, right. at least of what's sold to children. So in in this case, we're looking at diabetes as, as either an outcome mm -hmm. of low testosterone or a cause of low testosterone. And it may very well be both. Mm -hmm. We now know that in as, as a fact that men are getting lower testosterone at earlier ages. Okay. So we've backed up 10 years. It used to be 55. Now it's 45. So, so we're seeing a, men. Which comes first, the chicken or the egg right. argument? Right. Which this comes is, first, obesity and, and diabetes, and then low testosterone, mm -hmm. or low testosterone, and then obesity and diabetes. And in the case of diabetes, I believe it goes both ways. The okay. fact it's kind so of double feedback. It's right? a double. It, it it can cause low testosterone because as men eat, I mean, excuse me, as men are obese and have diabetes, right? They have it in their family. They have a bad lifestyle. They gain a lot of weight, especially belly fat. They become insulin resistant, and when that happens, they make a lot of estrogen. Yeah. The estrogen then suppresses the production of testosterone and binds up the testosterone that is produced. So that's one way that di diabetes and bad habits and bad diet can cause low testosterone. On the other hand, low testosterone makes people insulin resistant. That my, means pre-diabetic. Okay, my dad was a World War II veteran. He went mm -hmm. off to the war in, at 16, enlisted young, early, mm -hmm. lied about his age. Came back from the war, a typical American story. Got a job, went on with his life. At the end of his life, and he died in his early 70s, he weighed about 300 pounds. He was an alcoholic. He had diabetes. They cut off his foot because mm -hmm. he had diabetes. And... Uh, he continued to drink alcohol and eat ice cream until he died. And, and he developed serious heart problems. And, and so then the challenge is to say, well, what killed him? What did he die from? Did he die from heart problems? Did he die from diabetes? Did he die from Bad alcoholism? choices. <laughs> yeah. And, and addiction. But in his generation of men who came, he came from the rural south, farming mm -hmm. south, he didn't know any better. And as he learned better, he was so damn stubborn and resistant that he continued to do the things that were killing him. Well, this is exactly what confuses the argument because there are so many factors right. that cause diabetes. Is it low testosterone that brings in I, diabetes? And, yeah. and so if we just look at low testosterone, say someone is pretend there's somebody out there that is taking care of themselves, mm -hmm. that hasn't eaten a high carb diet, that exercises regularly, that has taken care of their health, seen their doctors and been, been very good at following the directions, which we know now aren't always correct, but they've done everything right. right. And they all of a sudden are getting obese mm -hmm. and they don't know why. 
and they are all of a sudden getting all of these other signs. They're getting high blood pressure. Then they gain more weight. Then they're then they are um, their li lipids are gone. You know, their lipids are high. Their LDL cholesterol goes up, and so all of these things start rolling. And they've done nothing different. That's where I believe testosterone starts crashing. And when it crashes, it stimulates insulin resistance, weight gain, and, and it keeps, starts and rolling. Obesity and Obesity, diabetes. high cholesterol. It's, and a, then, it's a vicious circle. And there are all kinds of different hypertensions, but the uh, metabolic syndrome is, the, is hypertension, high LDL, cholesterol. Um, let's see, what else is in that? Um, diabetes, insulin resistance. Uh, so those, that's like a metabolic syndrome and that's there. Then you're at high risk for heart disease. Then everything starts rolling from there. Then you're at higher risk for dying mm -hmm. stroke. That's all well, of these things. Well, then they things. have to make emergency interventions. Okay. We need to put a stent in your heart because it's not working. You're going right. to have a, a myocardial infarction or a stroke or whatever they want to call it. And so the focus of the medical treatment begins to be on that. They deal with the symptoms like, like ducks in a shooting gallery as they pop up and create a crisis. So we're, it's crisis, it's acute intervention medical care. It's not, it's, it's like when you swim and you do the Australian crawl, you, you've got to pull your head up once in a while, look around and get some air. <laughs> you put your head down and you just keep stroking. Then, but, you but don't I solve understand the that you get you get somebody to come to you for the very first time, and they're already what we call a train wreck. They they've got every got it all. Yeah, everything's wrong with them. Right. and you're a specialist, and you're taking care of the heart. Right. You can't go backwards and fix that person from and, and make them younger and healthier and have better habits. Right. You have to fix what's in front of you. I'm trying to I'm trying to change how yeah. we approach this. You and other doctors I, like it. I want to hit people at 40 and say, right. let's clean up our acts. Right. Then, and let's catch you before you get goo all over your blood vessels and high blood pressure and heart disease and low testosterone. What is the one thing that we can do that would prevent this in men? So, well, so it's... And the modern research that we are finding seems to point to the replacement of testosterone. Yeah, and and it and here's what it fixes. So if you think about this, it fixes insulin resistance, which then help decreases obesity, which then decreases heart disease. Uh, atrial fibrillation is decreased in men with normal testosterone. Uh, prostate cancer is decreased in incidence in men with normal testosterone, and um, high cl high cholesterol and triglycerides are lowered in men with normal testosterone. Mm -hmm. So mort mortality of all causes is lower in men with testosterone. Right. So every reason you could die is if you have a normal testosterone, you've just decreased your risk for every cause of death. And are there men who don't experience the loss of testosterone as they age? There are. There are a few. And, and those men, by In definition, general, will are live really longer healthier. and be healthier. They're healthier. They live a healthier existence mm -hmm. and hopefully a happier one because they're healthy. And we don't know why that but, is. We and there are some why. women that do the same thing. And, and it's really funny yeah. when you've never experienced being sick, right. how judgmental you are. <laughs> All those people that I know that are so blessed, the people that have been sorted out that don't have to come to me, right? that have normal testosterones at an old age, mm -hmm. oh, they're, oh, well, she just doesn't try. And she, I mean, they don't really understand what it's like to live in a world without testosterone. It's a terrible thing. Your whole life crashes in front of you. So, and you're at risk for all these other things. So I'm just saying, please be compassionate if you're one of those people who's so lucky to have their normal testosterone of your friends who don't and try to help them. Because if you're... If you're around when you're 90, you're not going to have any friends left if you don't help them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, seriously. So, so when we were looking at, um, we were looking at why doesn't, I mean, I think this is not the subject of the talk, but we have so many things that block us from being able to treat men with testosterone. Right. So we have the FDA and the DEA that say testosterone which every human has right. is a dangerous drug. 
Now, it's not dangerous unless you use it wrong, and it's not dangerous unless you're an athlete and they don't want you to compete at a high level. Well, they're talking about anabolic steroids. They're talking about... They're, but they call it testosterone. A, a, yeah, they mix these different words up so mm-hmm. that we get very confused. Pure testosterone, we all have. Adrenal steroids, we all have. But adrenal steroids are from the adrenal gland, testosterone from the testicle or from ovaries. They're different. Right. And, they, and if you take adrenal steroids... That is very damaging to your adrenal and to your testicles as well. But taking testosterone is not if it's appropriately given, like any other drug. Right. All drugs should be appropriately given or can be right. damaging. Right. So so that's one thing. But, but they're regulated. The government says, okay, this is a controlled substance. Right. And you have to have a physician's prescription to get right. it. And we will well, watch those Well, I don't really see that pers- problem physicians. because we don't, want, we don't want kids that are... 12 getting this. No, no, you're not arguing against that. But the the, the issue then becomes for physicians that do some, this. Somewhat. Yeah, but you got bureaucrats that are telling you how you have to write your prescription, obtain the medicine, from whom you may obtain the medicine. And they make and going over all, all of these of that. barriers. It makes it so the doctors just go, well, forget it. It's just too the hard. The bureaucratic regimentation that is required is really intense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. And, I have to do all of it. you have a, a, a large support staff that just follows the mechanics of those requirements. Mm-hmm. And then to compound it, which is a second issue, mm-hmm. not only does the FDA for the federal government do that, but every state has its own state DEA mm-hmm. that will come in and attempt to regulate mm-hmm. the exact same thing. But they have different rules. So you have to be a lawyer or a, a brilliant person like Joe, to read the legislation. Joe is our generic brilliant person. Here, yes. Whenever we need to come up with it. Yeah. For that. Well, no. When he reads, he has to read the legislation. It takes forever. He has to figure out what they really mean. Right. Because it always says, oh, look at paragraph number. Blah, blah, blah. I mean, it's it's a huge deal. I can't read it. I mean, it makes me crazy. So my ADD kicks in. <laughs> so, so in this case, it makes it difficult to follow the law. And when they change the laws, they don't like send the doctors a note and right. say we've changed the law. You're supposed to like, track like it. track it all the time. So you, you have, have to have somebody track to track it. So in any case, it's not easy to follow, and it's not easy to follow the rules. So, so because that's what we do, mm-hmm. we have this. We have staff specifically for that, and that's how we have to handle it. Because I'm I, I'm not going to be able to do that and practice medicine. So, so that's another thing. The other is that the FDA makes it very difficult to use bioidentical, which is pure testosterone made from plants, instead of a chemical pr- testosterone that has many side effects. So, they want us to use very ex- very expensive and very um, one size fits all testosterone. Well, they've been lobbied and, by the companies that manufacture the artificial testosterone. Well, you can't, and you can't patent it unless it's artificial or has something that's different than right. natural testosterone. So no one, no one wants to produce regular testosterone. So that's right. the key. So it's a, it's a money thing as usual. So, so that's, that's one of the issues too. So this is a really hard thing to get as a patient and to, and to treat with, and you have to just be very careful about your staff, how everything's handled. So that makes it really hard for us to prevent all these other illnesses. We would not need so many drugs. Right. We wouldn't need, we wouldn't need so many nursing homes. We wouldn't need so many care units if people aged were healthy. Well, and you have to have your hormones to age well. Right. That's all there is to right. it. So what you were listening for impediments yes. to this. So, and we mentioned, too, the federal bureaucracy, the state bureaucracy. The, the third thing is that when you, when you, if you set aside all the regulatory and maintenance mechanical issues of running a medical practice to make these medicines available to your patients, then you look at the other horn of the dilemma, which is that the insurance companies in America generally do not pay for testosterone replacement for people. Right. And so a lot of people don't get the treatment, which they and their doctor believe would be helpful. Or and would prevent all these other costs down the line. Yes. And all these other painful things. The other medicines and ter- you don't and have even, to take or pay for. And even death. You know right. what I mean? But th- yeah. it's not a, it's not a, uh, one step 
two step, you know, here we go. You take this medicine, you live a longer time. They, there's more steps in there, so they can't see it. And if, and you, if you suffer from the illusion that your insurance program, the medical <laughs> insurance in the United States, is designed to help make you healthy and live a long life, then you will die from that delusion mm -hmm. because it's not. Medical insurance companies are in business to make money. And you make payments into your insurance company every month. Their goal is to keep as much of that in their pocket and the pockets of their investors as they can and pay out as little as they have to. So they have to pay for people who are really sick. Mm -hmm. So they choose not to pay for preventive medicine. Right. They choose not to pay for weight loss. They choose not to pay for things that act, could actually help us on the other end. Mm -hmm. And and that one of those things is testosterone. Right. So testosterone for women is never paid for. Testosterone for men is sometimes paid for, but we have we have to provide a lot of documentation right. just for that. It, you can't just go and have it paid for, have it reimbursed. So, so, so the government wants all kinds of documentation and the insurance companies want all kinds of documentation. Yeah, right. So, so is there an option for just ordinary humans to say, <laughs> I don't want to play with that system. I want to obtain this treatment and I'm willing to pay cash for it. So I don't have to deal with these various bureaucracies. Well, that's, that's basically what we've done. The doctors that treat with bioidentical testosterone, that's what we've had to do. Right. So we've had to go outside and we've had to use going outside all of this other junk, we still have to play by the rules with the government. Right. But with the insurance companies, you have to not have any of any contracts. But but I just wanted to go over some of the numbers because yes. that's kind of important. Absolutely, sure. So when we talk about, uh, there's, there's many studies. I mean, I don't know how many studies we could talk about, but when we talk about testosterone pre preventing diabetes uh, and obesity, um, they're not always, not everyone who's diabetic is obese, but, mm -hmm. uh, basically there are several European studies that have proven, uh, that men in the lowest quartile of total and free testosterone, the lowest numbers, uh, were more likely to develop diabetes, metabolic syndrome, which is high blood pressure, both of which require lots of treatment, lots of visits to the doctor, lots of hospitalizations. And the men in the highest quartile of free and total testosterone, the ones that had the highest levels, were the least likely to develop diabetes and metabolic syndrome. So that's significant. Mm -hmm. that, that is, is significant. that's a... So you have 100 men, the 25 who have the lowest testosterone will have the highest incidence of diabetes and early death. Right. And the, the 25 men who have the highest levels of testosterone will be in the lowest numbers for of diabetes, diabetes and, death. and early death. This is not to even mention all the good things that testosterone do for you and your self-esteem and your and your sex life and your ability to move around. This is right. this is just, this diabetes. Is just diabetes. Yeah, which so, is becoming more and more of an epidemic in the United States. So even when you look at it with just pure numbers, so that was a journal of the American Heart Association in 2013. So these these aren't like right, they didn't just come out. Right. No, they've been around for a while, but for doctors while. doctors have resisted it. And the regulatory systems have impeded it. So we are fighting that fight to say, be aware, try to make changes, try to make yourself uh, in a position where you can access this kind mm -hmm. of treatment. It will pay dividends for you in longevity. It will pay dividends for you in helping you uh, avoid or reduce the impact of diabetes or prediabetes. And that is really going to become more important as you age and as our population gets fatter and fatter and fatter if from you, our diets. If you want examples, in our blog we'll have different uh, we have different sightings of the different articles that you can talk with your doctor right. about if he's he's not a believer in the religion of testosterone. <laughs> well, and the research that we find, I mean, the, the so much of it. The reason we started today with this conversation is it focuses on the epidemic of diabetes that's happening. There's other research that focuses on heart complications mm -hmm. heart as a disease. result of even of atrial low fibrillation, which is really not always tied to low testosterone. Right. Low testosterone, so that and that's very common in people with low testosterone. So, so we'll come and back and talk about disease. those things too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance Healthcast on iTunes and on YouTube. 
For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.